Hey what's up guys, it's Rich, welcome back to another video. Today we are playing some Battlefield 1. This first gameplay is Operations on Ballroom Blitz, and I'm going to be giving you my top 5 support player tips to help you be more effective, to get more kills, to get more points, and to help out your team to ensure the victory. So my first tip is going to be to understand what your weapon is good at and play to its strength. So in the first clip here I am defending B flag and A flag on operations and I found that this is one of the greatest places to see it, just near the B flag for a number of reasons. One, you can sort of help out defending A even from all the way over here with your long range capabilities with this weapon that I'm using, it's the Lewis Gun Suppressive, it comes with an optical sight and extra magnification, it comes with 97 bullets instead of the usual 47 on the standard variants and also everywhere you look around here is bipod cover. Now in Battlefield 1 uh, it's a little bit different with the bipods to how it was in past Battlefield games. Uh, in past Battlefield games oftentimes you would have to manually set up the bipod, it would uh, it would have an animation, it would take a, it'd take a little bit of time to set up but in Battlefield 1 it's instant which means that you can swap between uh, going from bipods to the close range engagements like this where I decided to spray from the hip. I didn't want to zoom in, you know, I understood that my that my gun was good at long range but if you're trying to aim down sights at that range uh, with this weapon it's very difficult to stay on target. Now if I was trying to do this tactic with a bar, even though the bar is considered one of the best support guns on the game, trying to get these kills at the range that I have been doing in this clip would have been extremely difficult given the bar's recoil and uh, inefficiency at that range. It's not meant for that type of play. The bar, in my opinion, is more of an aggressive LMG that I would use on... Uh, if I was on the other team here, if I was trying to attack these objectives and I was moving up a lot, I would use the bar instead of this weapon or the MG15, for example. And in this clip right here, I immediately lie, lie down. Even though I see two people that are aiming at me, I take the extra half second to lie down because I know that I'm going to be able to sustain my fire with very little to no recoil, and I was able to pick up two kills because of it. So conclusion for tip number one, I would highly suggest that you try and just before you choose your class, remind yourself what you are trying to achieve. If you are trying to rush up to an objective, use the bar, use the M1909 or the Madsen. And if you are trying to defend the objective and you're going to be playing more defensively, the Lewis gun or the MG MG15 are amazing options. Even the even the Hoyt, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that is actually a good gun at long range with a bipod. So my second tip here in my top 5 tips for support players is to throw more grenades. Now grenades are an amazing tool that you can use to play aggressively or defensively. Uh, so defensive grenades include the gas grenade or the incendiary grenade because you can cut off choke points, you can zone players. If they are, uh, if you're in a corridor for example, like in the previous clip where I was defending B flag on ballroom blitz, I could throw a fire grenade at the gates to the entrance and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to flank me from that position unless they wanted to be set on fire for whatever reason. Uh, if I threw a gas grenade there, it's a little bit less safe with the gas grenade, but you do get two of them because obviously SMG players, if, if someone was using the Automatico, they'd probably run around with the gas mask permanently attached to their face because they do not need to aim down sight. So uh, to cover your flanks, the fire grenades are incredible. I think they re regenerate a little bit quicker than the gas grenades as well once you've thrown down ammo at your feet. And uh, I, I just think the tip is to remember to throw more of them because when I'm watching this game play back, I could just be throwing fire grenades to the left hand side here because they try and peek around the train and it would just cut that option off from, for the enemy team. On the flip side however, you can use grenades as an aggressive tool and to provide more cover. Now an LMG or a support class combined with smoke grenades can single handedly win rush games. Now we were having such a difficult time arming this B objective on Argon Forest. So I spawned in with the bar and some smoke grenades, I threw some down, they weren't able to see me arming the objective. Uh, unfortunately they do, they, they were able to defuse this objective because my smoke sort of lasted too long and there wasn't a, a, enough people around the area uh, to defend the objective because we just got overrun. If you look at the, the radar here in a second, there's about seven people around me and I'm just, me, it's just me and a teammate in this, in this corridor and we're stuck. But the point is, the smoke grenade allowed us to move up to arm the objective and uh, I think we actually armed it here in a second as well and we actually managed to defend it as a team. I think the support class has this preconception of being a defensive class. You mainly use it on the defending side of games because you're able to bipod an area, throw ammo at your feet and, and never be you know, out of ammo and you're just able to hold down your fire and uh, destroy the enemy team. However, if you're playing on a fence, you still need a support player on your team. You need to be able to resupply your teammates uh, to throw down suppressive fire when you're arming objectives. It's still so useful and necessary to have a support player on your team when you're playing 
on the aggressive side of Battlefield 1 and the best thing you can do is to choose your class depending on what your team needs the most. Now I decided to use the bar and the smoke grenades here because it's, it's, it allowed us to move up, uh, provided more cover on the objective and we were able to take it in the end. So to sum this tip up, a grenade is far more useful if it's on the battlefield compared to your inventory. So throw them, replenish yourself with an ammo crate or an ammo pouch and then throw more and you'll be helping your team no matter what. So my third tip for support players relates to the fact that on Battlefield 1, sustained fire is better and more accurate than tap firing or burst firing. Now, uh, this is a good tip. If you are at range and you're trying to kill someone, hold down the trigger, you'll be able to have more accurate fire and you'll also have the bonus of being able to suppress them a lot too. Even with the bullets that you miss, you're still suppressing them. Uh, however, you also need to take a few things into consideration. Now, the LMGs can overheat. The MG15, for example, overheat after 35 bullets of continued fire and you just have to cock it back it does an animation and you're not able to fire for a few seconds now you need to take that into consideration if you are trying to kill numerous people and also consider the fact that tap firing conserves ammo with lmgs that don't have that much for example the bar here would be a good gun to try and restrain your trigger finger because you've only got 20 bullets at range you're going to obviously need to connect them as well. It, it's sort of a compromise between the two of being very accurate and try not to waste all of your ammo at once. I think for the most part, if you just try and remember to fully auto at range with LMGs, you'll be good for the most part. But keep in mind that there are some occasions where tap firing your weapon is probably a little bit better than the other option of just dumping your entire magazine into someone. So my fourth tip here for any support players on Battlefield 1 trying to increase, increase your effectiveness on the game is to remember to use limited charges. Now, the gameplay in the background, this clip, we are on Argon Forest still, it's still the same game, and I'm still using the same class. I've got limited charges and I know there's a ton of people sitting in this objective, we need to get in there and take them out. Now, limpid charges are surprisingly difficult to throw inside of cement pillboxes and then you can't really destroy the pillbox with the limpid charge either, uh, so it's not really a good example. In this, in this particular clip, but keep in mind that with Olympic Charge, you can destroy just regular walls, brick walls, and if you're playing Rush and there's an objective inside of a building, a lot of the time people sit in the corners of that building with shotguns, you won't know which corners they're in, and they will always have the first shot on you, and you're probably going to die if you rush in there alone. The Olympic Charge allows you to destroy their cover. If they're sitting behind the wall that you Olympic Charge, they will die. And it also enables your teammates to be able to get a line of sight on the objective as well. If you destroy the side of the house uh, that's closest to your teammate spawns, the snipers that sit back a lot of the time will be able to have a clear line of sight onto the objective and your opposing team won't if they don't do a very similar thing to the other side of the house, if that makes any sense. One thing I will say about Olympic charges as well is that you probably don't want to use them if you're playing as a defensive support player. You will probably find more success with the mortar uh, because it is a long range piece of equipment you can sit back and, and multiple people behind head glitches and stuff but Olympic Charge is a very close quarters piece of equipment if you're close to a tank for example combine it with a light anti-tank grenade resupply yourself and you can take out a light tank on your own single-handedly very quickly with a support class so my fifth and final tip and probably the most important one is to just be able to read the game, take a second to understand what is happening in the game. If you're struggling to take an objective or to defend an objective, try to understand what you could choose in your support class that will benefit your team the most. You can have a variety of playstyles with the support class. As you can see in this game, I'm playing aggressively with the bar, but I'm still seeing back a little bit. I'm letting the uh, assault players with SMGs and shotguns run into the objective, and I'm taking a backseat role here. I'm still near the objective, and I'm just trying to lay down suppressive fire, I'm trying to resupply these guys, I'm trying to throw down grenades as often as I can, well I would have if they weren't smoke grenades, because they would have benefited the enemy team. But still, where I was sitting, I was able to resupply my teammates all the time, I was able to kill people that were trying to get into that objective, and I would have been far worse off if I had just tried to rush in there with my team, because I had teammates that were already doing that. For example, if your team has a lot of vehicles on it and uh, they're dying a lot, Spawn in with a repair tool when you run past a tank, heal them up to full, you'll get yourself some points as well on the board. And uh, if the enemy team has a lot of tanks, combine it with Olympic Charge and some and light anti-tank grenades. The good thing about the support class is that it's very versatile 
and it can suit your playstyle no matter how you want to play the game and all you have to do to bring out the effectiveness of the class is to take a spare second before you spawn in to adjust your class accordingly to what your team needs and you can help your team to win more games now that is going to be the video guys those are my top five tips for support players on Battlefield one if you enjoyed it please leave me a like rating leave a comment on what your top tip is for the support class and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll see you all in the next video mm, bye